My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Hearthstone Arena. This, uh, this episode is a bit of a special episode. Um, it's, uh, it might not seem like it, but it is. Uh, this episode, it'll be released a few weeks after, so... I'll just say that before there's any comments about it. This episode was recorded on my 21st birthday. Uh, and, you know, if there's any day that you get to decide what you want to do, surely it's your 21st birthday. And I really want to fucking play Hearthstone Arena, and I can't do that without sharing it with the world. But at the same time, I also kind of want to show off something. First off, this fucking chair... I'm not going to lift up the camera and show it to you. It's a very expensive chair. Uh, it's a throne for a king, basically. It's excellent. Um, and then the second cool thing I kind of want to show is this. I'm sure you would have got a little bit of, uh, kind of, like, glass glare there, and you would have seen the screen. But, uh, what that is, is a map of Middle-Earth from the Lord of the Rings universe. Uh, excellent. Uh, uh, good feelings. And let's translate all of those good feelings into wins or losses. Maybe we lose all of the good feelings because we get fucking crushed. We've got two requests at the moment. We've got a, a request for Druid slash Rogue, uh, from Spurka Danny. And we also have a request for... Ah, right. A request for Shaman from Michael Ludeman. So, let's try and get either of those if we can. Um, obviously, if we get both, we get to pick the first one. So, that's uh, Druid slash Rogue. Okay. Looks like it's Rogue. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay, so, Secret Keeper and Ancient Mage are obviously horse shit. So, we're going to be taking the Sun Fury Protector. Assassin's Blade is actually a good card, which is... Very thankful, because the other two are shit. A new bar Ambusher is mostly a good card in uh, Constructed. In Arena, it's... Eh. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a lack of card draw, and the Novice Engineer might trade equally, because we have the hero ability, so it's... Uh, it's okay. Uh, Fan of Knives is okay, just because it's up against two that are... Shit house. Uh, so, it's a four mana, three, three with Divine Shield, or a four mana... Well, usually 3 mana, 3-3 three, three with Taunt. So, do I want an Iron Fur Grizzly or just a Silvermoon Guardian? So, I'm going to take the Silvermoon Guardian. Uh, oh, I want to take another Assassin's Blade, but a Defiance Ringleader is such a strong opening. Uh, Undertaker is horrible. So is Nerubar Weblord. Uh, Undertaker, I guess I have one trigger for it in the Nubar. Oh, God. Okay, so this is already a pretty bad deck right now. Um, we need to get a lot of high tier cards to pump up the value of this deck, because right now it's not looking too good. Um, okay. If I could, oh god, a 1-2 and a 2-2, two, two. oh god, to take a fucking war golem. This is all actually really bad. Um, Blade Flory uh, relies on me getting more... Weapons or Deadly Poison. Can I rely on that? Twilight Drake is only good in the opening hand. Uh, and if you've got a lot of card draw. Novice, uh, Wild Pyromancer is in... Uh, its effect would rarely come into play. I mean, it would be two damage AoE with the Pen of Knives. That's about it with his current deck. I'm going to take the Blade Flurry and hope to get some... Um, some... Uh, some... Um, deadly Poisons. Mind Control Tech is a solid 3-3 three, three for 3, uh, and also has the possibility of doing more than that. Mad Bomber is a 3-2. There's the Deadly Poison I was looking for. Cult Master. Okay, some card draw. Good. That's good. Uh, all of these are pretty bad, so I'll get a Sun Fury Protector. Oh, no. Alright, uh, this is officially a bad deck. Uh, I want to take the Assassin's Blade, but Venchico is so strong. I mean, I need higher end, so I need the Venture Code, but I can't, I, I can't do that to me. Uh, fan of Knives, Shiv. You know, I'm going to take the Fan of Knives. Am I? Which of these is actually a good pick? I'm going to take the Fan of Knives. Maybe it turns out being good. Uh, I, I, I lost, I, I've lost all confidence in this deck at this point. Uh, Earthering Fast here versus Direwolf Alpha. Direwolf Alpha is better because I can buffer my dudes to actually do stuff. 
I'm not engineer, I have to take the Dragon Link Mechanic because I need end game and I don't have any end game. So I'll just get all of the four drops, I guess. Another Assassin's Blade, excellent. If I got more Deadly Poisons, this deck would be significantly better. Uh, a Priestess of Loon versus a Jungle Panther. Since it has four health, when six mana is relevant, four health will most likely die to anything, right? Uh, anything it attacks. And Jungle Panther already does that, but it does it way earlier with way more effects. So I'm going to take the Jungle Panther. Master of Disguise is actually surprisingly useful. This is a bad deck. We didn't get any reasonable late game. I mean, we got two sprints offered to us uh, and another war golem, but that's about it for our late game. Uh, so, you know, we kind of got fucked on the late game, like pretty heavily. Uh, but the problem is our twos and threes are... Eh. They're... Eh. Uh, and we haven't got like any huge strength. Like outside of our four drop slot, which is just... We've picked all of the four cards. So yeah, it's a bad deck. It's a bad deck. This deck is going to go three wins because I am going to fucking force it to. I'm going to hold it down and submit it to make three wins, right? Just like Kimura, Armbar, whatever. I'll just like, you can't tap. You have to go three fucking wins and then I'll let you concede. And uh, that is how it'll be. That's, that's how I've decided. Uh, camera may be a little low for the new chair positioning, so I'll just move that up a little bit. I'm not sure where I'm actually going to hang the uh, the poster or the frame of the Lord of the Rings territory, Middle-earth. Because, as you might know, I've already got one hanging up there. And it was so hard to choose the positioning for that one. Because there's not much, like, free wall space in here. So it's going to be really interesting trying to find a place for that one. Um, excellent for me would be him coining out a one health dude, which he's not going to do. I mean, I've got Dagger Mastery. Oh, excellent. Greetings. So I could play this slow or quickly. That's... Oh, fuck yes. Oh, that was risky. But, because he could have responded with an attack, and then a shapeshift, and then I have to off-curve use Dagger Mastery. Whereas now we're in a better position. Okay, so unless he has something um, like a star fire, sorry, star fall, um, so he can do two damage to all creatures, then we're in a pretty good position right now, because next turn can be Chill and Yeti. He can get some stuff going on. So I can push four more damage by attacking his face and then uh, stealthing my dude, but I think it's just better to play the Chill Wind Yeti. Obviously, I don't want to trade that way. That'd be kind of shitty. It's important to note that this turn he cannot... Oh, wait, he does still have coin. Dicks. Okay. This is definitely worth it. You know, just thin down the board a little bit. Hopefully, at least a, like at least the Reckless Rocketeer can kill whatever he plays. If not, Reckless Rocketeer plus Dagger Charge. Uh, it's really important to note that I can do like six damage to a single target and three damage AOE at this point. I can attack something and Blade Flurry to clear a whole board. And that's real cool. That's not something I want to kill with um, Reckless Rocketeer because it's such a value downgrade. Oh, wait. Do I fucking actually have to do that? Here we go. Okay, so it might seem weird that I'm attacking that, but if he plays another taunt, I want to be able to attack the taunt and then blade flurry. <sighs> Fuck the curve of this deck, basically. More dudes, more dudes, lots more dudes. The gates are open. Okay. Here we go. Bop. Boom. Bang. Uh, I want to have the Silver Moon Guardian down because if I buff him with the Defender of Argus, which is a likely play next turn, Defender of Argus plus Master of Disguise or something like that, uh, I can have a 4-4 with Divine Shield run into something. 
and that's real cool. Pay attention, class. Hmm. Hmm. I can kill them both, and it would be attack, and then play the Reckless Rocketeer. Remember you know, at this point, I actually can start losing value. Because if he were to cast spells uh, and actually get 1-1s, one he would be able to bring himself back into the game. But now he's at such a card disadvantage that all I need to do is not let him develop a board and also not let him draw cards. That's the type of thing that would be problematic for a person in my position not wanting to let him develop a board or, you know. Um. Tadingo! Yes. My shield. What? No, we're supposed to go in the... Supposed to go in the middle. I I was hovering over the and was he going in the middle and then I must have just like moved it just a bit just to get it slightly off center and then um that happened. Swipe. A natural mistake. Don't you fucking dare. Oh, my screen's over there. Oh, I can kill that, but in the in the course of that, I will kill myself. Well, I'll almost kill myself. Ooh, is that close enough? Ooh, no, no, I'm one damage off. Nature will rise against you. Burr. 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 Whoa! And well played. So I had the card advantage, um, I just fucked up on the not card advantage. Uh, it's interesting to note that it actually wouldn't have mattered, uh, where I placed my, um, uh, swipe. Yeah, it wouldn't have mattered because he swept that as his main target. So, in effect, it would have just had one more health. Unless I attacked with it, which I don't think I was going to. Oh wait, but if it was taunted, maybe. So let's go 03. How about that? You know, nice birthday surprise, 03. Is it still my birthday? It might be midnight now. No, we've got another hour. Excellent. Which just means that I am horrible at keeping track of time because I apparently thought it was midnight. Oh, uh, 11th of October. That's when this was recorded. I usually don't like to date these episodes, but I guess this is probably an easy one to date because um, I'm metaphorically wearing a party hat. And very literally wearing headphones. Where's the opponent? It was the first time in a long time that I could actually sit down and record. So, might as well make exact advantage use. I don't understand how to words. Uh, okay, so Mad Bomber killing a dude would be rad. So, he goes his first turn. He plays nothing. I coin out Defias, but then I can't Mad Bomber, because then I have the quite large risk of hitting my own Mad- uh, sorry, hitting my own Defias with the Mad Bomber, removing its health to one, because he would Fire Blast on the second turn. Uh, removing the Ringleader's health to one, so then it gets Fire Blasted, he gets massive value, I get massive tempo, I can't trade value for tempo because then I lose. This is a tempo game. Sorry, this is a value game in Arena. It's a value game through and through. What to do? What to do? Hmm. 
I can't do anything for a number of turns now. I guess I probably should have played Device Ring Leader naked. Um, next turn is probably going to be Fan of Knives and then attack the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Which means that in case he's about to play a 3-2, I probably should have attacked the Sorcerer's Apprentice. That's my bad. Uh, but, what to yeah. do? A little bit on tilt, to be honest. Uh, three targets, three shots. So, on the first shot, it has a 33.3% chance. Uh, of hitting said um, the correct minion. Sorry. Here we go. Bam. On the second shot, it has a thirty-three point three percent chance of uh, hitting it, and then on the third shot, it has a thirty-three point three percent chance of hitting it. Uh, add all of those together, it had a literally one hundred percent chance. How did it miss? I know that's not how stats work. Don't worry. Before anyone who's like, um, actually, I, uh, I did a stat degree in university. So did I. I mean, so? What? what to do? Um, and I'm sorry for giving that kind of stereotypical nerd voice to the person that we'd be talking. I've done stats degrees before as well. Uh, I know that's not how that works. But still, that doesn't mean I can't be fucking salty as shit about it. Uh, I do have value right now, which is weird because it just means this dude must have fucking thrown hard. Um, what to do? And I have a really good 4-drop, right? A new bar Ambusher, it's a 5-5, five, five, very difficult to deal with. Uh, casting a Fireball directly in my face, unless he has the Fire- uh, like, a bunch more Fireballs and, um, Frostbolts to follow it up. Not exactly a, a thrilling move to be making. End your turn, motherfucker, you don't- I guess you just didn't want to make, waste the mana. Look at that shit. That's how a turn should be. Boom. Done. Hmm? Not gonna make you wait. I'm a courteous individual. So if I gotta return something to my hand, I'd like to return something useful. Either the Defias Ringleader, not the Defias Bandit, or the Shattered Sun would be okay. But I think, like, the Dark Iron Dwarf might cost too much to, uh, you know, really want to play again really quickly. I've run out of water. No, now I'm very thirsty. To stop that trade being really good for him, I'll do this. Well, I guess he's going to do that anyway. Oh, I'm a dummy. Oh, well, at least that dies. It means I don't have to trade my Shattered Sun to kill it next turn. It also means I die to Fireball. <laughs> oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. That's fair, that's fair. I deserve that. Uh, I, I will just say for a second, I did say it was a bad deck, so, uh... Not my fault. There have been times where I'm like, this is a really good deck. Yes, this is an excellent deck. 2-0. Sorry, 2-3. Uh, right, 2 wins, 3 losses. Right. Then... I accept the full responsibility, please blame me and my apologies, I'm so sorry. Uh, but for this one, no, not my fault. The really good thing about this, um, this, what's going on here, is, uh, I can... I can, um... Oh, I feel like Leo fits in, uh... In, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Just kind of, um, I can, uh... Oh, I, I, I hope you watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Otherwise you won't understand that reference and I'll look like a bit of a dweeb. Um, 
Yeah, I, I can Deadly Poison to kill whatever he plays this turn and play the Debias Ringleader off the back of the combo that I get from that. Please be not, not more than... That's a fucking perfect amount of health. Are you kidding me? What up, dog? Uh, best thing about this, by the way, uh, is I've also got the Dial Alpha, so I can trade these way up if I really want to. And I do. I do really want to. Um, if my dagger can take care of what he plays, then I probably just play the um, the Silver Moon to stay on curve. Oh, if that was Huffer, I would have been so happy. But it's not, so I'm not. I mean, I guess it had to happen. I didn't want to trade both of my dudes for it, even though that would have been, like, exact damage for the kill. Uh, it leaves me with a worse board position. Even though I get to keep the 3-1 weapon, uh, yeah, this is still better. Oh. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That's weird. I've never seen an ang a card at that angle when it's on the board. They usually, like, kind of rectify their angle. Okay, you go there, you attack that. Excellent. You attack, and then the Imp Master goes there. So the Imps will stand here, and then I can just run them off, right? So I can kind of, like, totem dance with the Imps. If you know what totem dancing is... Uh, sorry, if you don't know what totem dancing is, it was um, brought into popularity as, you see, as a term uh, when Shaman was a huge thing, um, where... You'd put a flame tongue totem between a bunch of totems, and then you attack with one of the totems. It dies, the other totem files in, and then you can attack with it, because it doesn't have summoning sickness. It's... Doesn't have summoning sickness. Um... So to reduce my vulnerability to uh, certain ways of losing, I'll do this. And this makes us much less likely to uh, kind of suck the dick of Satan as a result of uh, something like Explosive Trap. Because if I buffed the uh, Silver Moon Guardian and attacked, it would go down to two health. So that's... I forgot that the... Uh... I forgot that they have that card. My dream is it goes all for my face. Oh my god, he's gonna totem dance me! This is beautiful in how absolutely atrociously ugly it is. At least uh, there was no possibility of him playing Buzzard into that because that would have been um, Jeej, uh, commonly referred to as Jeej. I think it's better in my position to keep the backstab in hand. Now I'll make the middle one uh, have stealth so that he can't target explosive shot on it. Well, he wouldn't anyway, because that would live. Truth that was dumb. Okay. I can kill that with everything I currently have on the board. Do I want to do that? How else can I kill it? I can kill it with that, and then that, and then this. That seems much better to me. Okay, so now I'm in a rush deck, right? Now I am beating him in the face until he dies. Until he bleeds from every orifice. Hashtag Ebola. I'm gonna make him bleed so bad he's gonna call me Ebola. Is 
Is that worth Blade Quarry? It might be. It may well be. It definitely is now. I don't want to give him a card. And this keeps up the pressure actually better than I can do. If I um, am greedy and keep my charges. This is good. This is very good. So now we're actually kind of equal in terms of... Um, in terms of uh, kind of like value. Except I have much higher board presence and health. Although... Health, I, I still hate thinking about health when I'm playing games. Because I like to think of health as a resource that you spend in order to win the game. I win. I still win. Well played. No. With zero mana, there's nothing you can cast that will stop me from winning. Blades ready. <laughs> Next. Shing! Here we go. I had to show him the other blade, I guess. Yay! We didn't go 0-3, which officially makes this better than episode 50, which was also rogue and was 0-3. Uh -huh. I keep reaching for a, uh, a thing of water, like a, just a receptacle of water, usually a glass, possibly a mug, that I don't have near me because I fucking finished my water. So now I'm just going to have to go in dry. <laughs> Sorry, that was the dumbest joke I've ever told. Valera versus Uther. I will fight with honor. Excellent. Um, I would like to mulligan as many as I can, so it's going to be these two, so that I have the highest possible chance of getting a uh, device. What well, fuck this video game, I didn't get a defias. GG, well played. Quit, concede, kill myself. Um, I guess what I want to see is... Either a reinforce or an... I don't know. Yeah, reinforce is good. Now, Mad Bomber. I'm gonna give you another chance, buddy. You know what? I don't even give a fuck that you hit me twice in the face. You did your job. And for that, I am so very proud of you, son. So this keeps my dude alive. Because he would have taken one damage on the attack and then one damage on the death rattle. Because there's very few ways in which a... Uh, a, 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 a uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, very few ways in which a paladin can directly deal one damage rather than just casting a reinforce and waiting and hoping and praying. So, oh, Blade Flurry would have been... Blade Flurry, sorry. Blade Flurry? Do I have Blade Flurry? That's not correct. Is it? Might be correct. The lowest value Blade Flurry ever! Hmm. But? Maybe? Allows me to keep up the pressure. So, what, what would be my other play? I would play the Anubar Ambusher. And I would uh, kill that with my dagger. And then I attack 3-1 uh, to the face. Most likely, the Worgen Infiltrator turns around and kills my Mad Bomber. Uh, it would... 3 damage would be left on the Anubar Ambusher. So a Sword of just Sorry, a uh, True Silver Champion or a Hammer of Wrath would kill it. And return the Mad Bomber to my hand. This is actually a better play. That's so fucking dumb. Like, the obvious play there uh, is a new by Ambusher. And the obvious play is wrong. It's very wrong.
Oh, by the way, uh... uh oh, wait, he didn't... Hmm, okay. He didn't have what I thought he did, but it's fine. It's, it's the same thing. Rip, rip. That would draw out another Consecration if you had another one. Do I want to do that? No. Okay, so what I was thinking I was going to do is play the um, Dragonly Mechanic coin and play the Dial Falfa. But that is a worse play. Uh, that is, sorry, that's an okay play, right? But the thing is, I then decided not to play the Dial Falfa, which means it would have been a much better play had I just, I don't know, played the fucking Anubar Ambusher. So I can develop my dagger and attack that. Or I can develop a Defender of Argus. My seal for Argus. Put a Direwolf Alpha in... Well, it doesn't matter. Well, it actually kind of does. Put it there. Kill that. Trade down, kill that. The worst result is that he consecrates and then has the Silver Hand Recruit to kill that. So actually, it is worth trading down. It's not worth three damage to his face to lose my entire board to consecrate and a recruit. Uh oh. Is his RNG strong? Yep. Pretty strong. Now you might be wondering why I am so very, very hesitant to play the mind control tech, and that's because he still has six cards in hand and can create a 1-1 one, one recruit every turn. So the possibility that he actually ends up with uh, four minions on the board and I can actually steal one of them, little bit of thievery, uh, is pretty damn high, to be honest. I mean, that one's stealthed. True silver champion, I still need to play around. I got this. Yep. <sighs> There's no reason not to develop the um the Silver Moon Guardian at that point. Because I'm not gonna have enough cards to justify having a coin. Especially because of how low my mana curve is. I'm stacked on twos, threes, and fours. Excellent. You sneaky bitch. I see what you're doing. Please give me this. This, this, this. Oh, yeah. Okay. My seal for Argon. I got this. Here we go. Remember, Am I the biggest idiot ever? Hang on. Four, three, three. I missed out. Okay, no. He would have been on four health. It's okay. I'm not the biggest idiot ever. I'm just one of them. I am so sorry, Danny. Disgraceful. Okay, so the Jungle Panther can kind of lay in wait. What other burst damage do I have in my deck? I have another Blade, right? I have another Assassin's Blade. I have another Blade Flurry. I have a Deadly Poison, which I've already used. No, I didn't. That was a previous game. I have a Poison. That's about it. Oh, also, I have that fucking chargey motherfucker, the Reckless Rocketeer. Go straight to the face. That would be cool. That could be cool. I'm wondering in this situation if he would cast the True Silver Champion if he had it. I think he would. Here we go. This is likely going to be the last turn, one way or the other. So I need to develop as much as I can, which means, oh well, I didn't get ma uh, value out of the mind control deck. That's okay, though.
he needs six damage from hand in order to win this game. Six damage. Ten mana, three cards, six damage. Not undoable. That's not damage. That's not damage. He needs six damage. Now he needs ten damage from one card. Oh, you fucker. <laughs> oh, wow. Does that actually win? Are you kidding me? Here we go. Four, four, three. Eleven damage. <laughs> what? Four, four, three. I wonder. If I had a blade flurry, I would be the happiest man. <laughs> How do I stop myself from losing this turn? Well, I guess that wants to hit him in the face if I want to do that. But then I have to hit him with that. But then that hits that. So that means Here I have to hit that. But that. But I want... This is the stupidest shit. So, the game is left down to mind games. I need him to believe that I don't have an Assassin's Blade in hand, and therefore not play in such a way that uh, would... Uh, I, I, therefore play in such a way that would leave him vulnerable to an Assassin's Blade. By which I mean he has to leave all of my creatures alive. <laughs> or at least most of them. I don't like this video game anymore. This is a this is a difficult video game. This video game is too hard for me. In order to kill the Frost of Four Lord, I would need to use both of these. Well, this and a uh, charge from the Assassin's Blade. And then I die to an army of one ones and a seven five stall. Are you kidding me? Here we go. Well played. Well played. If it's okay with everyone, I'm going to go and commit suicide now. Uh, any final words? No? Okay, cool. Uh, as a birthday wish today, someone said, um, may all of your arenas go 12-0 and all of your packs contain legendaries. Let's see if we can make at least one of those happen. Philip, you fucking genius! <laughs> deserve that shit oh. and an epic excellent let's open that first sea giant cool I already have that one but that's okay because I already have most of the useful ones the only useful one I'm missing is Sylvanas let's let's just uh the only money that I, the only real world money I've actually put into this game was to buy Nax Ramus. Um, and that was like $18 or something like that. So I've never actually bought and, uh, bought packs. So let's see how I've actually been going. Oh, wait, is Legendary? Yeah, okay. So I've got Van Cleef, which I had to craft for my uh, rogue deck. And I've got Gromish Hellscream. I actually unboxed two Gromish Hell uh, Hellscreams. And then I had to DE one. And I've got Thalos. Uh, all of these are from... All of those four are from the... Uh, Max Ramus expansion. Two can blood hoofs. I'm not I'm not using my dust right now, so just in case they happen to change can blood hoof at any point in the future, I'll just leave that there. Uh a Maxna, a Black Knight, Kelthuzard, Ragnaros, Ysera. It's weird. Like Ysera, Ragnaros, 
kind of uh, Black Knight even control archetype decks uh, really rely on them. Can Bloodhoof as well. And they were all the ones I opened, right? So I got a lot of the really useful ones. Um, the only one actually out of these that I've crafted was Edwin Van Cleef uh, and the Blood Mage Thanos. That's it. The rest of them have just been opened from packs. So I'm actually really happy about that. In fact, I got two Yseras as well, and then I had to D in one of those. And a uh, Fisherman, Nat Pagel. Oh god, that used to be an amazing auto-include in every deck card, and now it's... Uh... No, I don't want that shit. It's that. Ugh, that's unfortunate. Regardless of all of that, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Hearthstone Arena. We played a rogue. Fuck the rogue. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourself. If you have, please click like. It does help me get my content out to new people. If you haven't, click dislike. That's fine with me as well. If you want to see more of this right now, you'll be able to find my playlist down in the description. There's playlists for Arena, uh, Adventure, and Ranked, and maybe gimmicks by this time i'm not certain whether the gimmick series will have started by this time if it has then there's gimmicks down there if it hasn't then well you're shit out of luck in that front hopefully you've been enjoying yourself and we'll see you next time